So why are we so scared of the other? We fear what we don't understand and we hate what we fear. Hello everyone, welcome to The Poor, the place where we serve up both faith and culture. I am Father Christian, your host, and today we have an incredible, incredible guest, a dear friend of mine, Mr. Rabbi Matthew Durbin. Welcome to The Poor. Thank you, glad to be here. Yeah, it, it is a tradition of the show. We're gonna open up a uh, some drinks to pour into, in, into the drink. Uh, which one do you have? I have probiotic blueberry lemonade. Two billion cultures. Is that appropriate? That's why I did this. I have the, the strawberry lemonade. This seemed like the best thing since you run hot. I thought that maybe you could use all the cultures and the electrolyte. L'chaim. Yeah. Tastes like water. Tiny bit. Rabbi, why do you think this works? This? This. Why this works? Yeah, you and me. We're very different. You like cold coffee, I like hot coffee. I use a tailor, you don't. You don't comb your hair, I do. But this this works. Because we both have a mutual understanding and a sincere need to learn from one another. I wanna learn from you. I wanna learn about Christianity. I wanna learn about how we as a community can understand each other. Do you ever fear that when you hang out with us here that we're trying to convert you? No. We almost had a parishioner join your synagogue. That would have been a coup. Were you kind of excited that maybe <laughs> some of you were about to win one over? Well, you know, we are the oldest Western religion on the planet. You have a curiosity, as I've known you. We've done 143 podcasts. 61. Okay, 161 podcasts called A Priest and a Rabbi. We've done live uh, events with over 200 people showing up where we invited the Imam and Mibams. A shout out to Sheikh Shafayat. What have you learned personally? How have you grown from all that? I think for myself, what I, what I have learned over these many years is that it, it, it takes work. I think it also takes an ability and a perspective to be able to go outside of one's own comfort zone. We're talking about two polarly different Christianity, Judaism, and as we've had with Islam. Would you say they're polarly different? What, I mean, the Messiah thing is kind of a sure. I mean, I guess, Son of I, I God. Guess, yeah, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. He was Jewish, though. Yes, yes, he was. So, he so was that helps. Absolutely. And he did die a Jew. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then the whole raising thing is where we yeah. have to, that's where it's like. Yeah. Yeah. When you do this work and when we do this work, there is obvious we have to acknowledge the differences. We can't sit there and sugarcoat that. But there's obviously, there's a curiosity, as you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Why are you so curious about the other? I think for myself, I wasn't born and raised with it. As a Jew, I was born a Jew. It is something that for myself, I take great pride in, but it's also that curiosity. The Messiah has always been one that has really intrigued me. You got over a billion followers around the world. How does that happen? I just, I don't know. I, for me, I crave it. You and I both thrive off learning about, let's say, quote unquote, the other. That, that what I mean by that is anyone who's kind of looks different than us, talks different than us, believes different than us. And I remember one time on our radio show, we did have a guest one time who said, look at your phone and the last like 10 people that you texted. And if they can believe the same things you believe and look the same way you look, you might want to expand. You were trying to get other people intrigued in the other, because it seems like that's a good thing to do. How do we get people to kind of invite them into that, the excitement that you're showing right now? I think even when we go back to say our radio program, our podcast that we did for three and a half years. The importance of it was not the differences. What was important to me was let's look at our similarities. Let's look at the commonalities that we have amongst our faiths. We all believe, have this understanding of Abraham, the father of uh, monotheism. If we believe the same core values and, and story, isn't it easier to then start picking apart the differences in a respectful and a understandable way. So why are we so scared of the other? We fear what we don't understand and we hate what we fear. The greatness of what we, we bring to the table is this ability for us where we're saying with response to some of the questions and answers, I don't mean to offend you, but I'm like really curious. And if it comes across wrongly or misconstrued uh, improperly, I'm really sorry. I just, maybe I don't know the language. And I think for me, it's trying to break that mold to be able to say, look, there's nothing that's off limits, but let's engage. 
Let's have a conversation. Okay. Is that picture there like the Egyptians beating Hebrew slaves? Sorry, are we on... Uh... We have a painting of Egyptians and no one has ever said that. Yeah. That's why it's good yeah. to have people in your community who are not part of your lens. But I think we're getting at this thing of just like the, the love and enjoyment of the other. And it really does, I think, our body good. Because it, it does expand our mind. And as humans, we always want to be growing. So I, I don't think this is a, a, a call to say, yay, diversity. I think it's more of a call of just like growing as a human being. And sometimes there are going to be uncomfortable places and that's okay, just acknowledge it. But the most important thing is doing things like this, having a drink. Yours actually is taste. Okay, let's do some rapid fires here, all right? You ready for this? Okay. Best book in the Bible. Who? Uh, the book of Genesis. Most underrated prophet. Deborah. Most overrated prophet. Isaiah. Best judge that could run for office in 2024. Deborah. Is David totally overrated as a leader? Yes. Didn't expect that come out of your mouth. I think David would totally make an incredible reality show star. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if they had cameras back then? Stealing, um, he's an adulterer, he's a murderer. Sure, yeah. I mean, it'd be incredible. Just get him five glasses of Chardonnay in him. He's just like, yeah. you got an episode. Uh, Rabbi Durbin, on a serious note, I do treasure our friendship. And it's one that has endured. I love you like a brother. And thank you for being on the port today. You all, please do subscribe, like, and share whatever platform you're watching on because we got more episodes coming with wonderful people like Rabbi Durbin. Until then, stay frosty out there and we'll see you next week on the poor. It's just so funny how this, 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 this world of religion, which is supposed to be bringing us more deeply into love, becomes these battle lines, these grounds that we won't even cross over these lines sometimes, or we won't even go over to a certain place, when really the most overarching message out of all of them is love. Welcome to the poor, the place where, do will you stop Sorry. at like a, when you said to the poor. No, that's you, you just, 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 just. Okay. Okay.